There are five guys today that we're discussing that have a, both a mix of great value and breakout potential. But the one thing they all have in common is they are all must draft players. Whether you're into the underdog format or the ESPN format, I have a mix of both players on this list. So the first running back on the list right now is Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans, man. So Derrick Henry right now is, you need to target him on underdog. I love his price at underdog right now. He's the RB8 on underdog, and you're getting him in the third round right now. This is crazy value to me because you're talking about a running back who has been a top five running back for several years straight now when he has been fully healthy. Now, you know I like to give both sides of the story when I do these videos. Here are the negatives on Henry, and there are definitely some of them. So first of all, he's going to be 29 years old. He is 29 now, and that's what he will be during the 2023 season. So if you're asking me what I think about a veteran running back that is usually a 29-year-old guy, I'm telling you to stay away from him because the, usually we see the efficiency drop, we see the volume drop, a lot of things go away once you get past 26, 27. And yeah, the volume did drop for Derrick Henry. He went from 27.4 carries a game in 2021 to 21.8 carries a game in 2022. So there is a pretty decent level of volume drop for him. And on top of that, Tennessee also projects to have one of the worst offenses in 2023. They didn't make any decisions that were really big decisions so far this offseason. With DeAndre Hopkins, there's still a chance they get him. But we'll see. No, so far, they haven't made any additions to the wide receiver room. They drafted a quarterback who is raw, probably will not play for most of the first part of the season. There's just a lot of things that Tennessee should have improved on, but they didn't when it comes to offense. I get the concerns, guys. Definitely understand the concerns. But Derrick Henry is still a workhorse back, man. That cannot be forgotten. Even though his volume dropped as far as carries the game goes, he still led the league in carries per game last year. That shows you two things. One, it shows you that Derrick Henry is not going anywhere. And two, it shows you that the league average as far as carries per game for running backs is starting to drop a little bit because a lot of teams like to have at least two running backs in their system that are very important to the offense. Derrick Henry is one of the last true workhorse running backs in the NFL. And also, this is crazy to me, but we have to remember this. Derrick Henry had the most targets in one season in 2022. That's crazy. You can see on the screen. That is insane to me because the reason why it happened is because Tennessee had no weapons. Tennessee had nothing last year. Now, here are the two reasons why neither of those things are going to change in 2023. So aside from Traylon Burks and maybe Chigakonkwa at tight end, like I said earlier, Tennessee still has no weapons as of right now. They got nothing. So Derrick Henry still is going to be extraordinarily important in this offense. And the second reason is because Ryan Tannehill is still the starting quarterback. So Ryan Tannehill still getting older. He's been banged up. His body is starting to wear down. Older quarterbacks who are not as mobile anymore, what do they like to do? They love to check the ball down to their running backs. That's why Derrick Henry is going to continue to reap the rewards of being that running back in this offense. Now you can make the argument to me that Derrick Henry took a step back last year. If you're asking me, I would say that he might have taken a small step back last year. To me, when you watch my film, he didn't look like he wanted to be as physical. He didn't look like he wanted much to do with contact last year. But as far as his explosiveness and his importance to the offense, I just did not see enough of a decline last year in his play to warrant me not wanting to draft him. And especially at that price, he's got such high upside in that range of running backs and players in underdog drafts. Like I said, RB8 going in the third round, you need to get a share of Derrick Henry. He is must-draft material in 2023 fantasy football. Moving on to our next guy on the list, it is Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans, man. Running back, this is crazy, man. You need to target him in both ESPN and underdog leagues. He's the running back 21 on underdog and the running back 25 on ESPN. What's crazy to me is I seem like the official Damian Pierce fanboy, man. I have discussed him so much this offseason, why I am drafting so much of him. 
I cannot get enough of him. Now, I've had to start to put a cap on that a little bit. I've had to start really targeting other guys in his range, like Miles Sanders, who I really like in that range as well. Just because I don't want to have too much of one player in all of my leagues. I'm shooting for at least 100 leagues to be in on underdog this year. So I want to make sure that I divide the guys up pretty evenly, but still going after the guys. And as you can see, I, I have a lot of confidence in Damian Pierce. But like I said earlier, I like to show both sides of the argument in these videos. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So there are some negatives here with Damian Pierce for sure. Like I said, he's still on the Houston Texans. He's still on a bad team. That's the reality here. Running backs on bad teams typically don't have massive ceilings. That's just a reality in fantasy football that we have to deal with. Now, the other problem is with Devin Singletary coming in, some people believe that he's going to be a big factor and he's going to take 100 to 150 plus touches away from Damian Pierce. I think we all think that Damian Pierce is a very good player. I don't think that there's people out there saying Damian Pierce just isn't that good. If you don't think he is, let me know in the comments below. But I would imagine that most of us really agree on this one that he's a very, very good player. So here's the thing. Here's why he's must draft, man. There are so many great things about this. And first of all, to put this one to bed, here's why Devin Singletary is not going to be much to worry about. So what the narrative has been with this Devin Singletary, Damian Pierce thing is a lot of people were concerned about Damian Pierce being a late round running back. He was a fourth round running back and some people even have the nerve to compare him to James Robinson's situation, man. Here's why it is so much different and you cannot compare him to James freaking Robinson. James Robinson was an undrafted player, right? And then the next season after he was fantastic, the Jacksonville Jaguars drafted a running back in the first round. That's why it's different. Damian Pierce, fourth round pick. Was great last year, very similar to a James Robinson type of season if you want to compare him that way. But the big difference here is that the Houston Texans didn't even draft a running back in 2023. They picked up Devin Singletary, who was also a later round guy. He was a third rounder, almost a fourth round pick though. And when you look at them stacking up together, Damian Pierce is so much bigger. 5'10", 218 pounds, ran a 4'5'9". 40 time, not exactly what I like to see, but he has the size to be a three down back. Then when you look at Devin Singletary, 5'7", 203 pounds, ran a 4'6'6", man. So as we can see here, Damian Pierce, so much bigger, so much more adept to working a three down running back skill set than Devin Singletary and so much more athletic than Devin Singletary is. That matters, man. If he would have came in and signed a multi-year deal with a lot of money guaranteed, I would be way more worried about this one. His contract is a one-year deal with 3.75 million as the maximum. His guarantee money is 2.5 million. That is slightly above the veteran minimum, man. That's what his contract is. So that should show you that they don't have much commitment to him either. They got more commitment to Damian Pierce. So at most, he's going to be their receiving back who sees 50 to 60 targets, man. That's the reality here that we're looking at with Devin Singletary. Now, what I've also done in previous videos is I have compared Damian Pierce to last year's running back 10, Dalvin Cook. He was last year's running back 10 in fantasy football. Now, as you can see on the screen here, their volume and efficiency is very, very similar. Almost identical carries a game, almost identical yards per carry, almost identical targets per game. Very, very similar all around, including fantasy points per game, man. So the only problem was that Damian Pierce missed the back half of the season, a little bit less than back half of the season. I think he missed the last four or five games with that ankle injury. Now he's going to come into this year very healthy and they have a better quarterback this year. So they should have a more balanced offense with CJ Stroud. He is an immediate automatic upgrade over Davis Mills, man. Then when you factor in the second year development that naturally happens with any good player, at that price, man, when you can get him as an RB2 or an RB3, at that price, man, it is so freaking clear. You have to draft Damian Pierce and get at least one share of him in fantasy football. Moving on to our next guy on the list, it is Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints, man. 
feel like some people have just forgotten about Alvin Kamara a little bit. You'll see why. In both ESPN and Underdog Leagues, which is where you should be targeting him, he's the running back 31 on Underdog and the running back 30 on ESPN. It's literally like people have just forgotten about him. It's crazy to me. And listen, I understand, like, here's the situation with Alvin Kamara. I fully understand why he has taken this massive fall. If you have not forgotten about him and you're just choosing to not draft him, I understand why. The efficiency and the touchdowns have largely dropped a pretty significant amount over the past several years with Alvin Kamara. It looks like the age is catching up to him. Plus, he's facing a potential suspension. It hasn't happened yet, guys. And he is also going to be 28 at the start of this season. So he's at an age we don't like. He's got a potential suspension coming up. And he has dropped in efficiency and touchdowns per game over the last several seasons. I get it, man. I really, really do get it. But here's the thing, man. He can still provide you lots and lots of boom games like he always has in fantasy football. In 2022, here's what he did in a couple of weeks last year. 22 points in week five, 18 points in week six, 17 points in week seven, 42 points in week eight, and 19 points in week 16, man. So Alvin Kamara did not lose the big play ability that he has always had. He still has the capability of scoring three touchdown games. That's just who Alvin Kamara is as a player. Now, like I said, I really do get the argument that you shouldn't draft him. If he was going as the RB17, RB16 range, if you didn't want to draft him then, I would definitely get that. Like I said, looming suspension, all the other issues combined here, I totally get if you don't want to draft him at that range. He's no longer a safe player. But the reality here is, man, in fantasy football, you want to get values, man. You want to have the best value at each round of your draft. And at that price on both underdog and ESPN leagues, he is absolutely a must draft player in 2023. Moving on to our next guy, it is James Cook of the Buffalo Bills. This is the thing, on both ESPN and underdog leagues, he's must draft guy. RB30 on underdog and RB32 on ESPN. Now, here's the thing about this one. Lots of fantasy football content creators are coming out and saying the exact opposite of what I'm about to tell you right now. They're saying not to draft him. And you know what? I understand the argument here. And full disclosure, I really don't like James Cook as a player that much. So it feels weird for me to have him on this list. First of all, I want to go through why I understand the argument. In 2022, he had 6.3 carries per game. 5.7 yards per carry and 2.2 targets per game and 6.9 fantasy points per game. So what happened, right? Like you can see here that he didn't see much work, but he was very efficient with the touches he was given. Well, the big piece obviously was that he lost a lot of work to Devin Singletary. Obviously that's what happened last year. So now Devin Singletary is gone. Exit Devin Singletary. Here's what he's leaving behind. 178 carries, 822 rushing yards, 52 targets, and 280 receiving yards. So he's leaving behind a pretty decent amount of volume that James Cook theoretically could take over. Before we assume that he will take over the volume, in comes Damian Harris, right? Now 2022, here's what Damian Harris did himself. 10.6 carries per game, 4.4 yards per carry, 2.3 targets per game, and 8.2 fantasy points per game. So essentially what you're getting here is you're getting a running back two from Buffalo last year in James Cook and a running back two in New England from last year, Damian Harris. Who's gonna win the majority of the volume in this offense? So first of all, as far as Buffalo goes, what we can see here, what we know about the Buffalo Bills is they want two things from their running backs. They want efficiency and they want pass catching upside. Now, when you look at both James Cook and Damian Harris combined, James Cook is more efficient and he has more pass catching upside than Damian Harris does. And when you factor in the second year improvement on a fantastic offense, one of the best offenses in the league, if he sees the majority of the work, he could easily go from the running back 44 finish last year to the running back 24 to 28 range. 
That's why he has breakout potential right now. The reality here is, man, you need to get in on a share of James Cook because he does have that breakout potential and he is on such a great offense. And that price right there is just not too high. Get in on James Cook. He is a must draft guy. You need at least one share of him. Moving on to our number five running back on this list. It is Khalil Herbert of the Chicago Bears. I love, love his underdog price right now, man. I am eating it up. He is the running back 40 on underdog right now. That is a little bit crazy to me, and you'll see why eventually as we move through this. So here's the thing. Like I said, it's good to highlight the negatives. He has never seen the full workload yet with the healthy David Montgomery. The only time he sees a good amount of volume is when David Montgomery is out, and he has seen a couple of those games over the last couple of seasons. Now, when you look at his 2022 stats, there are some skewed numbers in here because David Montgomery did miss a couple of games in 2022. So he had 9.9 .9 carries per game. Remember, that is a skewed number. David Montgomery missed games in this category. He had 5.7 yards per carry. That is not skewed. That is super, super efficient. He had one target a game. Actually, technically less than one target a game for Khalil Herbert at 8.7 fantasy points per game. So as we can see here, really is just not seeing much volume, like I said, because David Montgomery has been there. Now, David Montgomery is gone. So here's what Montgomery is leaving behind. So last year, Montgomery had 201 carries, 8,801 rushing yards. So I'm not even gonna get into the targets here for two reasons. Number one, Khalil Herbert is just not much receiving back, as we can see. And number two, the Chicago Bears are in a situation very similar to two other teams, Philadelphia and Baltimore. Why? Because they all have extraordinarily great rushing quarterbacks, and those quarterbacks, their first instinct is not to throw the ball and check the ball down to their running back. Whenever they face crisis, unlike a pocket passer, their instinct is to run, use their own legs to either run or make a play and throw the ball down the field by buying themselves some time. So that's why I'm not going to get into the targets right now. So before we just give David Montgomery's old volume to Khalil Herbert, here's what the Chicago Bears did as far as additions go in the running back room. They added Deonta Foreman and they added Roshan Johnson through the NFL draft. So here's what Herbert has in his favor out of all those other guys. Herbert is the longest tenured running back on this team. This head coaching staff with Matt Eberflus and his staff, they're in their second year now. They got to see Herbert up close and personal and what he did well last year. And that's why even when Montgomery came back, Herbert was starting to see more volume in this offense. So I like the fact that he has been there the longest with this coaching staff, has more familiarity with the coaching staff, and he knows the offense already. And he's also the most efficient running back out of all of them. Which leads me to the conclusion of what I believe is going to happen in the Chicago Bears offense. I believe that Herbert handles the carry workload. I believe that he is the main running back and sees the most carries in this offense. What I see for Deonta Foreman is that he spells Khalil Herbert. I think that maybe he sees 30 to 40 carries in 2023. The reality here with Deonta Foreman's career is that when he has had a healthy running back in front of him, he's nothing more than a backup running back. He's had a couple of lucky seasons where he's seen his primary running back get injured so he could step in and be an important piece. But the reality here is when he has a healthy running back in front of him, He's really nothing more than a backup running back. And Roshan Johnson sees the receiving work. I believe he is the receiving down running back, the third down running back who can be a security blanket for Justin Fields if he needs it. Remember this, Khalil Herbert was the running back 39 last year. So if you're keeping track of his underdog price, people are expecting him to regress from last year. That's not going to happen because if he handles the workload and he maintains some of that efficiency, I don't think he'll maintain 5.7 yards per carry, but even if he drops down to 4.7, 4.8 yards per carry, if he handles the carry workload, I can almost guarantee you that he will finish above his ADP and that is why he is a must draft player because fantasy football is so much about finding great values at certain points in the draft. Every round of the draft has a great value in there. My job is to find those guys for you so we can discuss them and you can make educated decisions for yourself. And the great thing about it is there are several wide receivers who have a mix of great value and are must draft players as well. And if you wanna know who those wide receivers are, click on this video right here.